Afternoon, coaches. I, um, I, I, with the club shutting down, the rugby season shutting down, I feel like this is a good opportunity for us to get into some um, some off field learning. Uh, I'm going to be doing this with with, with our players as well um, because I'm, I'm, I'm conscious that it's not something that we get to do an awful lot. So today, this this webinar is 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 based around defence, um, but it's based around defence, you know, the, the the Highland way, the way that. We coach it, um, the things that we're looking for, and you know the the triggers that we we want and the attitude that we want from from our players to, to be able to execute it. Um, so if you look at the at the, at the bottom of this this graphic here, this is our game model. So going from attack between attack and defence is our transition. So something that's really important for us is how quickly we can organise, how quickly we can connect. Uh, and how quickly we can we, we can adapt to what we see in front of us um, between us having possession of the ball and us losing possession of the ball. So that might be if we kick the ball, that might be if we're turned over, that might be if we if we knock the ball on, um, and they and they then go on to they then go on to attack. Um, so the things we're we're looking at are are you know limit the opposition's attack, as you can see here. Um, stop momentum and stop the ball. So you know we're, we play against a lot of teams who who play they play pretty direct and pretty pretty, pretty pragmatic rugby. Um, and we need to give ourselves an opportunity to get off the line. So part of our DNA as a as a club defensively is that we have a really aggressive press um, or, or line speed as as we might know it. You know every, everything within our defence again comes down to organisation. It comes down to automation in a way and um, here we see collision and contest so the, the things we're looking for with our defence are to get the ball back or for the opposition to kick and if they kick everybody's on the same page as, because we know we've got what we want out of this so that that then creates broken field, that then creates counter attack opportunities and more than anything we've, we've, we've put them under enough pressure for them to give us the ball back. Uh, the, the, the principles of play that we go by are dispossess, deny, dictate. Um, but again, go forward, support, go forward, support, go forward, support are 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 are, are just as relevant um, to what we want to do as defence. So first, first things first is we we, we want to fill the field. We want to make our make ourselves as wide as possible. So that means making good decisions around the breakdown. Um, and it's you know that's something that can be coached uh, and, and, and triggers that we look for. For example, have we made a dominant tackle behind the gain line? Great. Then we need to win the space, keep the hands off the ball, win the space, and and counter ruck through. Um, but going before that, you know we, we want to fill the field. The the hunt comes from the inside, the inside defender. Um, so after we've filled the field, let's square up to the attacker. But when I mean square up to the attacker. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean that our spacing needs to be relevant to where the ball and the attacker are. So um, teams nowadays play with lots of layers. So our defence can't look like that. We can't have lots of layers in our defence. So we need to defend the space and the ball first. The ball is the threat. Uh, something that we've found that we have a lot of success with recently is that um, look, our aggressive line speed is... Teams have really struggled with it. And they've really struggled, especially with the amount of pressure that we put on first receiver. So that first receiver might be, um, maybe a forward playing off nine in a pod. So we want to attack that forward's outside shoulder, get their outside shoulder, turn them back in, or pressure their skills. Because if we if we put a huge amount of pressure on on a first receiver, especially one who who, who might not be used to playing there, you know, we're, we're either going to make them pass early, we're going to hit them behind the game line, or we're going to force a mistake out of them. And I think um, trying to stop it at source is, is is pretty essential. So then, you know, even if they do manage to, to keep a hold of the ball, the the play after that and the play after that and the play after that gives us the upper hand. So um, hitting them behind the game line, giving us an opportunity to slow down ball, steal ball, or reset back into the line as we want to um, is is exactly what we're looking for. If they manage to if they manage to get quick ball. So they, we've not given ourselves an opportunity to to have line speed. So that could come from um, not resetting quick enough. That could come from really effective clear out from the attack. That could come from poor shot selection in terms of in terms of our tackle. Um, they might we might have went high um, 
without tackle without tackling out their legs, and they've just might have been been able to 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 latch force and fall, which means we've not we then have to change to a negative defence. So we'll talk about positive and negative defences uh, in a wee bit, but shot selection is massive in there, and that that's very much that very much depends. Um, I would like to think that everyone would always go low, um, but that, that's. Um, as, as you know, most things in rugby, it completely depends on, on what's happening. We put a big emphasis on um, resetting at the line as quick as we can. So we we rest at the line, not on the way to the line. And so that means that, you know, if we're using 75% of our our total acceleration to get off the line, we need to get back into that line as quick as possible. Because if we don't, we then don't get to give ourselves an aggressive press and you know the, then the... We, we give the attack the upper hand by just allowing them to, to attack the space against quite a passive negative defence. Um, we always want to try and get the ball back in three phases, and more often than not, that doesn't happen. But it's important that we stay connected to the defenders either side of us, or scan, talk, listen, what do you see in front of us? And uh, we just keep repeating the process, and we keep, we keep loving our defence. So something that... You know, it was the players that, that spoke about was red line defence. Um, and we really want our aggressive press to be something that we can, can identify us by. Um, so this then needs to trickle trickle down club wide because we feel we get a lot of, we, we get a lot of um, success out of it. Um, but understand that it's it's maybe something that is a little bit more technical than than, than coaches would like to like to get into. So with all of this, all of our games that we play, all of the stuff that I, I send you, the, the, the what to coach is, you know, we, we do this at training and it's not just games for the sake of games. Our games have objectives um, and our objectives for attack more often than not are either to play the ball into space or create two-on-ones and execute the two-on-ones. So you flip that on the defensive side. We want to stop the defence playing this. We want to stop the attack playing to, play into space and... And we want to we want to stop them creating two on one. So that means that we need to give ourselves an opportunity to go forward. So working hard off the ball, and and we need to make sure that we support our lead defender. So whoever's taking ball, we need to support inside and outside. Then protect our teammates inside shoulder. So if anyone steps back inside, they get they we've then got a dominant hit. And you know, our, there's lots of little things around our chat that can that can help us. Um, Quite a few of you have, have spoke about wanting to know about backfield coverage, and I'm going to come into this. Um, our backfield coverage has changed quite a bit recently, simply because um, we, we we don't have the most confident of of leaders in our back three, should we say? Um, so you know, they're, they're great ball in hand, they want ball in hand, but they, they don't speak a lot and they don't they don't command an awful lot. And this, and to be honest, to, to be absolutely honest with you, we we got quite um, impatient with with trying to develop ways to to do this in training, so we we reverted to a static to a static coverage, as you can see here. So static coverage, we basically play with two fullbacks. You can see in here, and this is you know we defend most of the time between the opposition's ten meter line and our twenty two. So within this, we we want to play. Um, with 13 defenders in the front line, this includes nine. Nine will probably defend on the on the blind side where possible and uh, control control the blind there. And we have two fullbacks, which would be either fullback and or winger, or it just completely defends Ireland. Ireland play with Connor Murray back here and and the fullback. So if if the play moves over to this side of the field, this player will move up into here to take last player and this player will move in the back to, to cover any kick that might go over the last player but they won't come up and join the line they'll always sit deep in deep in here and give our players here an opportunity to step back when we're when we're defending in the opposition's 22 we understand that they're more likely to kick and you know we're a team that really thrives on counter attack and you know if if we're trying to force the kick as part of our defensive principles and our defensive objectives then one, two, three need to be ready to stop that ball going out into touch and attack and attack and attack. If if 
ob- quite quite obviously if we're um, if we're quite dominant up front or line out's going well, then you know we don't have a problem with with the ball going out here. It's just giving us a set piece to play with. When when I haven't put the diagram in here, but when we get into our own twenty two, we then revert to a fourteen plus one. So a fourteen plus one would be fourteen defenders in the front line, really putting pressure on the opposition with one defender in coverage, and this would usually be one of our one of our weakest defenders or one of our quickest quickest players who really like to cover ball, so cover any kicks. Um, so we we would try and put. For example, Hugo Crush in the back here. Not that he's a weak defender, but he really tracks ball really well and stays in line with the ball. So if, if, if you've got any advice for anyone who's playing with a 14-1, they need to track the ball, stay in line with the ball as much as possible. You know, this the the 13-2 gets quite quite tricky when we have a midfield scrum. So if we have a midfield scrum here and We'll, we'll use this diagram, for example. If we have a midfield scrum here, then the wingers are going to need to be slightly dropped behind centre, 10, 9, centre, with fullback deep. And if play goes to this side, over this way, this this defender will, will come up and attack, will join the defensive line, make the tackle. Fullback will drop back into the 15, onto the 15 here. Winger will drop back onto the 15 here. And they'll stay like that so that we're not using using wings on strings anymore. They're staying and these front 13 players are working really hard to keep their shape but give ourselves opportunity to go forward and uh, and, and take away the space. So you can see here I've, I've colour-coded where we do certain things in the field. So we're finding that, that, that teams still play with three in the backfield which means there's a lot of opportunity to attack um, through the front line. The, the, trouble, the trouble comes when, it's not necessarily trouble, but it's a different challenge than we find, is when teams play a 14 plus one in the middle here, which means that we have to rely on our kicking game a little bit more and put it into here and, um, and really put pressure on, on the opposition in their own half to, to clear and maybe make a mistake down here. Um, so that's when we, we have to be a bit more pragmatic. So it's understanding what's in the backfield. Um, so if there's three, what opportunities does that bring in the front line? If there's two, what opportunities does that bring? You know, we're really susceptible to kicks down the middle here, little chips. But everyone's really aware that you know that's one of our objectives is to force the kick. So if they if they chip in behind here, we've got players either side closing the gap, ready for these guys to counter attack and or catch and secure ball. Um, there'll be another webinar on, on counter-attack and what we do after that, but this, this for me, I, I feel is really important. And, and we try and build this into a lot of our games, especially our 15 v 15. So, for example, if we've got under, under 16s against under 15s on a Tuesday night, um, maybe in the future we could maybe train a little bit later for, for half an hour just to try and get the whole pitch, then you know, this is something I would like to see and something that we could condition is, right, you're in this area of the field. Let's let's step two back in the in the backfield and, and and what challenges does that bring? If we're in here, then we can condition the attack to to only be able to play two phases and kick out. Maybe making sure it either goes out or or the, or the chase is right. And there are there there are a load of videos of a load of videos that I've got of of us defending in here, opposition missing touch, us going to this touch line and and scoring. So you know it, it's really important that. There's real clarity in how we want to defend, not just in our front line, but in our but in our back line as well. And that was something that that I personally didn't get right. I wasn't, I didn't make it very clear as in terms of what we were doing um, with our coverage. And now I feel we have real clarity, and and we're not losing, we're not leaking as many tries through kicks. Whereas you know the last season and the season before, the majority of tries we were leaking were through were through were through kicks, um, not necessarily good kicks, but they still put us under pressure because because of our systems and um, and, and and I took responsibility for that. So if you, if you look at this this graph here, you know every team wants to defend from the touchline, um, simply because there's only one way to go, and this and this gives us a, a really good opportunity for us to get off the line. And if teams want to play wide, great. 
you know, I would I would expect us to knock them well behind the game line if they want to play wide. But most teams will play off nine to a pod here to check our line speed and to split the field. You know, this is something that we look at in attack. So if we're playing a 13-2, so 13 in the front line and two in the back two in the backfield, you know, one of these players here is going to be our nine, somewhere around about here. So if they play to here and they maybe have a release option, then these players are here to cut off. So we want to stop them inside, inside the inside post where possible. But if we don't, and I've, I, I do have I do have some videos that that I'll show you here. If we don't, these players need to be prepared to check to negative. And what I mean by check to negative is 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 check where we are, paddle, change change our shoulder position and our and our hip position, and let the attack go to the touchline. Don't dive in. Let them go to the touchline, and we might concede yards from it, but they've had to work really hard to get around us and they've had to play some risky passes to get and play really deep to get around us. If a kick comes into here, then you know this this player here is is more than capable of covering and we'd expect these players to fill in behind and create a wall for any for any uh, chaser that's coming here. Um, as I said earlier, part of our DNA is is our aggressive hard press. Um, and then coming into into our fold, and then coming into our shot selection. Um, so the, there's a lot we can talk about, and there's a lot that our that our games give us, um, and and a lot that we can coach within our games that that are going to encourage this. So here, pressure attacker skills, force mistake or early pass. You know that for me is first receiver touch, and this is something that you know does exactly what it says on the ten. If we're playing first receiver touch. It's, it's not for the sake of it. It's to encourage line speed. It's to encourage putting pressure on first receiver. It's to encourage everyone else to get there. You know, and, there and there's little things we can build on. I've, you know, I put out a, a game that London Irish Academy are, are working with lately called Raiders Touch. So if we're playing, if we're playing ten v ten, eight v eight, whatever, and you know we could still have the first receiver condition in there, but one of these players here has a bib. And if they make the touch with anyone on the ball, anyone on the ball, they get the turnover. Um, and there's there's lots of layers that we can add in there. But you know, I think that's a really good addition to to make on top of Raiders touches to keep first receiver as as a touch turnover, especially if we're able to force them back inside. So this player will have lined up on this player's outside shoulder, trying to get them to force back in. Um, more often than not, they'll, they'll carry anyway. Um, but if we flip that on its head and this was us, we would look to tip and attack that hole, which means that these players need to need to be connected. So we call this player the rabbit. And it's the rabbit because they're going to go ahead, not miles ahead, just maybe maybe a couple yards and try and make that dominant hit. And we're, we're, like we're saying, don't be scared of making a missed tackle here. We want you to try and stop momentum. Stop momentum, stop the ball where it is, and give us an opportunity to get off the line again. Um, and again, there, there's a video at the end of this of us against Mar, and there's some good things and some, some there's some bad things, and um, some some things to work on. But all in all, it, it it really highlights the shape that we're trying to get and and how active we are off the ball. So we we'll, you know, the things that we're saying are, are, are rest at the line, not on the way to the line. And if you're walking, it's already too late. So, you know, we want guys to, to get there as quick as they can. So that gives us a better opportunity to do what we need to. So if we get what we want out of this and, you know, we've been able to stop the attack there. This, for me, if this is, if, if this is just outside the 15, we're going to fold two minimum. We'll likely fold three, depending on what happens. Um... So if, if the contact has been in here, in the 15, we'll fold three around the corner. One, two, three. If it's in the middle of the pitch here, we'll fold two. And if it's in this far 15, we'll only fold one. So three, two, one. And the tackler, or the tacklers, we would hope that every tackle will be a two, a two person tackle, will reload to the blind. And one of these players here is, is a nine could be this player could be this player if this is if this is our wing you know they're really controlling what's going on here 
and 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 counting the numbers. So this is a picture that we would like to see. We're numbers up or we're numbers on, which means we can give ourselves an opportunity to get off the line. Again, they've split the field, so that means we're going to have to check our lane speed a little bit. But if we reset early enough, we, we're going to give ourselves such a good opportunity of really getting in their face and forcing mistakes and forcing uh, opportunities for counter ruck, forcing opportunities for ball and man hit, and forcing opportunities for intercepts, um, which which is something that really attracts us. And and um, if you've been watching the first team and the second team for the last three years, early on over the last couple of years, we've really been picking up a lot of intercepts and we've been scoring from them a lot. So teams then stop trying to play as much rugby against us, and you seen and, and Mar did that. Um, I think Mar gave us a lot of respect, considering that they're top of the league above. Um, but you know, it was it, it was exciting to be able to test our systems against a big physical defence, and and it was exciting to actually see that we limited their attack to to, to pretty dull rugby. Um, so if you if you have a look at this box again, it, it, it talks about stealing five meters. We we need to steal five meters every time. Steal five meters and check. So that might be the check. The check zone might be paddle. So if, take half the space and paddle. But we're saying steal five and check. So if if they've got lots of layers, we might have to check a little bit earlier and then move with the ball. And it's it's okay to move with the ball if if we if the pass beats us, that's fine because we're going to be able to check to negative and let them go to the touchline, which means we get to start this process all over again and hammer them in here. And again, they're going to have to play really deep to get around us, um, not accounting for a, an individual error. So, you know, that this is just, just two aspects of things. So defending from a touchline, de defending from a 15-meter ruck within a 13-2, within a, a um, and it's... You know, it's something that we've, we have a joy with and something that I feel that the more clarity that we've given the players and the more the more things that we've tried and tried to understand and, and tried out as a defence, um, the, the better we've got. So here we're looking at a defensive set against Mar where we, we end up turning the ball over. Um, so consider shot selection, um, reload time, so the time it takes us to reload back at the defence, how many players are folding, and how we're getting into the def into the attack's eye line. So here, this player here is Scott or Connor Bickerstaff. I can't remember which one it is, and they currently they are absolutely electric and outstanding player. They're currently with Scotland Sevens, so we we knew he was a big threat. And he likes to get on the outside, so we wanted to get in his eye line as much as possible, get high on the outside with our high press and force him back inside to our really physical players like you know Gordy Gregor, Andrew Finlater, Oscar Baird, and our front and our front row. Sean Blair loves loves hitting people. So um you have a look. There's lots of good, lots of lots to work on. Oh, 
So, as you can see, I'm going to play it again for you without without any sound. They're clearly a good team, and an attack's objective needs to be to to speed the game up, to really put the defence under pressure. And there, there was an over chase um, from me actually, and they were able to get to earn earn the right to unlock an offload, which is something that we try to do. So, so that lost us ground, but we've got a wide ruck here and our shot selection is excellent. So we're able to stop momentum dead and it gives us a chance to really be, get off the line here. And we, we understand that Mar are a really hard folding team. Again, we get off the line, make a ball and man hit. We're having a look, the ball's the trigger. So we need to give ourselves as much opportunity as possible to get off the line. And that means having a look up, have a look, have a look, get off the line. Let's make double hits where we can. So fold. We've had to adjust a wee bit because someone wasn't doing their work, but we forced them back inside as much as possible with excellent shot selection. And because we're really quick to reload, we really give ourselves a much better opportunity to get off the line and slow their ball down. So. That again is, is an excellent double shot, which forces a turnover, and then we can we can then kick. But something that I'm especially pleased about here is how quickly we connect to get to the 22. So it's a it's a it's a good double tackle with a wide ruck. So we understand now we can get off the line hard. And I'm not sure what they're thinking is here, but it's a massive compliment to our defence and our system and how much effort we put into that last defensive set that they're then going to spend the next 30 seconds to a minute picking and going um, from well over halfway in the middle of the field. So for me, the system worked. Um, we spent a lot of a lot of this game defending and we spent a lot of the time trying to work out, you know, how how our shot selection can 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 really help. But for me, this has all been developed through our games. So through our small-sided games, through our 15v15, and and even linking into our skill zone. So when we play Barbarians, so Barbarians is two-touch turnover. You know, we this isn't just based around attack. You know, the the, the aim for for defense is to make two touches with two different people. So that to me encourages go forward and support. We need to support our teammates. So Covering the covering the field, supporting the inside, and making double shots is is a way that we get the ball back there. If we're playing if we're playing grenade touch, we need to give ourselves an opportunity to get off the line. So that means contesting ball. That means that that means giving ourselves line speed. You know, and then if we go on to play Highlanders, that's a different challenge than what Mar gave us. So how do we defend against a team who lift the ball and don't create rucks all the time? And you know they create different challenges all the time, and 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 the players often come up with solutions that that that, that blow my mind. Um, so within all of this, you know, it's it, it's 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 how we're coaching things. So don't just let a game run for the sake of having a game run. It needs objectives, and the objective for for defence are you know how how can we give ourselves line speed? First of all, we need to get the ball back. It's not for me. Defense isn't about stopping stopping them scoring. It's about getting the ball back and forcing the kick. Because we part of Highland's DNA, part of Highland way is that we are an aggressive attacking team with and without the ball. So if we're able to get that ball back and we're able to transition really quickly into attack, then 
our our training needs to look like that. So our methodology needs to look like that. Do we give our give our kids lots of opportunity to do that? Do we give our players lots of opportunity to do that? And you know, a, co- a coach who's coaching through games needs needs to have a second ball. If they see something they don't like, roll a ball into the defense's side and see how they attack. Then trans- transition to defense, and it needs to be quick. We call it click, click into defense, click into attack, both sides of it. You know, if if for example we can start with a scenario, so we're on our goal line, we need to kick. How do we then transition to a defense of of moving our defensive line up the field and and not giving away any triggers as to as to where to attack? So, sorry. Something like that. So defensively, if we go back to back to this, if we have two coaches and we're playing a game of we'll use the example we used earlier of um, Raiders touch, then how how do we give ourselves an opportunity to fill the field? You know, how how are we squaring up to attackers? How are we getting off the line? How 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 are we communicating this across to across to our our players that you know, this is what I want from you? How do we limit them to a, a two pass? What's our shot selection like if we're doing contact? And how quickly do we reset in the defensive line? Is are we really slow in resetting in defensive line? Then that that quite clearly means that we maybe struggle athletically. And one of our pillars of performance is athleticism. So game sense, core skills, athleticism. If we're not fit enough to play this system, then you know, the games will give us the fitness. Because the only way we're going to get fit to actually play the Highland way is by is by doing. Um, within, within game sense, we, we things need to come naturally. When, when I say naturally, I mean it needs to be automation. So... When we're playing, do our players do these things automatically? And then get into our core skills. So our core skills, catch, pass, tackle, offload, clear out, um, ball presentation. And I would add run into that. Run is absolutely a core skill. If we can't run, then we can't play the game. So we need to be super fit to be able to do this. Um, and within our... Our, our performance analysis. So Pingu's our performance analyst. He does all our GPS data. Um, our outside backs are, are usually um, covering the most distance simply because of 10 meter sprint reload back, 10 meter sprint reload back when we don't have the ball. And that makes up a big, big chunk of what we're doing. So good luck. Um, Learn to love defense, learn to love coaching defense. I really love coaching defense. Um, and you know, there'll, there'll be more about the technical side of defense coming into this. But when we do coach our games, don't neglect it. It's not all about the attack. It's about how we stop the attack. But we spent the last two years, three years, really, really developing a good foundation of core skills and a good, um, a good sense of how to play the game game sense in it in it and so you know this is now the challenge for us is to is is to become really 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 effective within our defensive systems as individuals and as collectives and i've, I've not i've not asked the club or told the club yet but my my um my plan is to is for any team that can doesn't concede any points they will have their match fees waived. That's that's the plan. I'm not saying that the club will. Um, that's an idea. I'm not saying the club will agree to that. They probably won't. Um, but for me, the the theme needs to be something along the lines of um, defend defend our fortress, defend our castle. Something that that leads into the culture and heritage of what we're trying to do. But again, defense is part of our DNA. Defense shows how much we care. If you care, if you if if you love the club, if you love the coaches, um, you're going to get off the ground a lot quicker. Um, and going back to things, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. So as as, as a coaching group, it, it's really important that we're quite emotive around this and that we're able to sell 
our defensive story and our defensive themes and our defensive systems, both individually and collectively, as, as well as we can. Um, stay safe, and I'll, hopefully we'll get be able to get back to rugby um, quite soon.